In this lecture video, we will continue our discussion of membrane-bound mediated responses, and we're going to do that by specifically focusing on G-protein-linked receptors, and we're specifically going to focus on the cyclic AMP second messenger system. So in the cyclic AMP second messenger system, first off, let's orient yourself. So here's the extracellular fluid in blue, in tan is the cytosol, and then we have the plasma membrane. So rather than just memorize the pathway, look at what who the players are. Here we have a receptor. We have a G protein. We have adenylate cyclase, which is the amplifier enzyme. Here is our cyclic AMP, our second messenger. We have protein kinase, which always phosphorylates a protein. So let's look at turning on the cyclic AMP system now that you know who the players are. We'll start with the ligand. Remember the ligand must be lipophobic. So the ligand is binding to the receptor in step one. Step two, that activates the G protein. And we talked about what happens when you activate a G protein. GDP falls off the alpha subunit, GTP is added, and the alpha subunit slides over. When the alpha subunit slides over, it will smack into adenylate cyclase, your amplifier enzyme. That will then convert ATP to cyclic AMP, your second messenger, which then activates protein kinase A, which then phosphorylates a protein, and it requires energy to phosphorylate a protein, and then you get some sort of response inside the cell. So the response inside the cell is going to come later. So when we talk about very specific tissues, we'll tell you exactly what that response is. We'll need to turn off the cyclic AMP system. The ligand, remember, has a half-life in the extracellular fluid, and so eventually it will be degraded. The other thing is that you don't want to have the response inside of the cell occurring forever. You want the system to have a response and then the response be over. Okay, for example, if you need to increase your heart rate because you're having a sympathetic response, you don't want your heart rate to stay elevated all the time. You want your heart rate to be able to come back down to normal. How do we turn off the cyclic AMP system? So we have a few steps here. First off, remember that the ligand binding to the receptor is reversible. So the ligand falls off the receptor. Then remember that we activated the G protein. So now we need to deactivate the G protein. So we're going to deactivate the G protein by hydrolyzing GTP back to GDP plus the phosphate. So that's a hydrolysis reaction. Remember, we converted ATP to cyclic AMP. So we want to lower the levels of cyclic AMP in the intracellular fluid. So we're going to use an enzyme called phosphodiesterase. And what phosphodiesterase does, this is an enzyme that's covalently regulates reactions, and it will always break down a second messenger. So phosphodiesterase always breaks down second messengers. In this case, we're breaking down cyclic AMP. Then we also have phosphatase. Phosphatase is an enzyme that will dephosphorylate the protein. Remember protein kinase A phosphorylated a protein. So as long as we have that protein phosphorylated, we'll still have a response occurring inside the cell. So phosphatase will dephosphorylate the protein, and all of these together then will turn off the system. Phosphatase, remember, is also covalently regulated.